the future of WordPress will bring to us in the next 12 months with Miguel, Jorge and Maggie. A warm welcome to them. Thanks, everyone. Uh, is the mic okay? Okay. So uh, let's go very quickly. Um, first, who are we? Uh, we are the all three of us code Wranglers at Automatic. We are both Gutenberg and core contributors. Uh, this is George from Porto, Maggie is from Sevilla, and I'm from Lisbon. And um, first things first, this is not a talk. The purpose of this is no, that it's, it's okay. It's, um, the purpose is to give you a sort of a quick demo. Uh, shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Uh, I'd like that to be an icebreaker so that then we have 20 full minutes for everyone just just ask whatever you want. So, uh, to give some context, we are in the middle of a four-phase era of WordPress that started six to seven years ago with the development of the Gutenberg project initially, whose faces are uh, initially, it was the post editor, which culminated almost six years ago with the 5.0 release. Uh, not that the word work is done, but that was the culmination then, followed by the site editing focus. And I think last year was when it finally felt like something. So that was 2023. And we are now, if this thing works, in uh, the collaboration focus, um, which is the catchy thing is real-time collaboration. That's usually what gets people at people's attention. But it's about flows in general, uh, administration, everything. And that's where we are now. And obviously, the infamous multilingual as the one down the line. And we'll get there when we get there, I guess. Um, and we're here now. So that's what we're going to talk about. So. Admin re redesign is one of the pillars of the current focus. Um, I'm going to show a, mostly a concept video. It's a design thing, uh, showcasing one of the 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 current vehicle of transformation of uh, administration. We know it internally as uh, data views because most of everything you administrate in WordPress is a collection of things. Could be post media, could be custom whatevers. Um, and so some of this is already there. Uh, some of it is underway. But the idea is to equip WordPress with a generic framework for listing things and listing them in different ways, such as a side-by-side -side view for seeing your whole posts, maybe your whole templates, giving you uh, complex filtering, adding quick editing abilities in the middle, or even like table-based editing. Um, maybe better bulk actions or book editing on the side. And you can easily imagine it uh, adapting more, uh, I don't know, intimately to different things like media could be a, uh, a masonry style, or you could use it for a store where you have something that feels more like an inventory, uh, all with the same framework. Some of this, uh, the posts, pages, media, et cetera, that's already there, but yeah, we can expect this stuff to move pretty fast. So that's admin redesign. Don't bother, bother with the links. We'll give you a QR code that <clears throat> at the end that will have everything in it. Uh, next up is blocks made to fit. And we can have a look at sync patterns, which will have a little bit of a twist now. And then the grid block, which I hope will be as exciting to you as to us. So sync patterns, uh, formerly known as reusable blocks, they should be nothing new if you've been using this stuff. Um, usually patterns you would either have, it was kind of an all or nothing deal. You either have a reusable thing and it's, it doesn't move or it's, it has to move for all the posts where it's being used, or it's more like a stencil. If it's not a reusable one where once you drop it into a page, then you have no guarantees that the user will not mess with it. And, but what if you could have the best of both worlds? So I have a reusable block here and I duplicate it. And notice that I can go into the title of the copy and change content. But then if I go back to the actual, uh, the original thing and change the background color, this was the original one. And then I go back to my page 
And notice how both instances have had their background color changed. This is live in the plugin. Um, it's not available in all the blocks, but this is already happening. And I think this is, yeah, you can ask questions in the end. Um, that's sync patterns, grid block. Do you want to take it? No. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Great block is um, already partially there. Um, we we're improving on it, and I, I'm very excited about this. Uh, especially looking into probably future default themes like 2025 to implement this. Um, we're slowly getting there into adding uh, the CSS spec into the group block. Um, and I think it's going to be a very, very uh, good tool for themes to have, um, along with other tools that we are building, like uh, negative margins and stuff, that are going to allow um, layouts that so far you cannot make. Like, is it? This is in the plugin, by the way. Yeah, this is uh, already in the plugin. And uh, I think the resizing with um, the, the clicking on the handles and resizing, that's an experiment in the plugin. I think that's the last one. This one. This one, I think it's an experiment. I, this feels like magic to me. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait for all the layouts that these designers are going to be working with. Uh, now it's improved editing. And in improved editing, we're going to have uh, section specific styles, uh, zoom out mode, and uh, improved content only editing or simple editing. For section specific styles, this is going to be, oh, sorry, too early. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be um, a way to style just specific sections of a website, um, allowing the, the theme developers to curate um, styles that are specific for sections that users can apply um, on demand to any section that they want. Um, and that will react when the theme styles are changed globally too. They work in a similar way as block styles do now, but they affect the whole section and they will uh, affect blocks uh, specifically. You create the styles uh, depending on the blocks that you're expecting the section to have. Like I want to style a specific section. I want the, the backgrounds of group blocks to be one way, the, the buttons to be another way, depending on if they're present or not. And zooming out, whoop, sorry, too early again. <laughs> yeah, zooming out, um, we're working um, on creating templates um, instead of block by block, section by section. If you tinker with 2024, you see the, how many uh, patterns the theme has that are section specific. Um, so we're working on creating a way to build your own pages or templates by using sections. Uh, zooming out a little bit and being able to to view the whole page like from a bird's eye and having um, like this full view of the whole site of the whole page and not having to uh, figure out not clicking inside of the specific blocks inside the sections and just treat it as uh, whole blocks using the patterns. This also ties up really well with the section styling 
because you will be able to boast, uh, uh, well, I'm going to show you both um, insert sections. Um, and then once you have them, you will be able to add those uh, styles specific for those sections if you want to change the, the look that they have. The in zoom out mode, you will only be able to select specific full sections. You will not be able, when you click on it, you will not uh, focus on the blocks inside them. You'll be able to shuffle between them depending on their categories, move them up and or down, and also delete them. And then in the future, we will also have like an option to rotate between the stylings if the theme allows them. Yeah, I guess that's me. Um, simple editing is um, there's something that we've rolled out, I think, uh, last year or over the couple of over the last two years called content only editing. It's a bit of a mouthful, but the idea was that um, you could set up a mode where uh, the user, because whether because they're novice or because they want to focus on the content, they don't want to have to deal or they don't want to see the blocks that are the structure of things like the spacers and the columns and the this and that. Visually, everything looks the same, but as they interact with the canvas, only those things that are content are actually um, live. And we're exploring from a design perspective ways of evolving these concepts. They can be ways of locking things down. They can be ways of um, just adding extra guardrails. Um, one of the design explorations, this is super rough, is even adding explicit controls to what might be a simple mode. And then you'll notice that in the structure and over there, we highlight the pieces of the blocks that are content, but we don't see, yeah, like spacers and stuff. And we can imagine applying this broader, in, in a broader context, like a header, you could just highlight the components of the header and you can have drill down navigation to incorporate the actual editing of the menu through that inspector, through the inspector controls. And yeah, this is only a sliver, so we can move to the next thing, which is you, George. Uh, so I will talk a little bit about uh, new possibilities that will, uh, will happen uh, in the next releases of WordPress. Some of them are even already released. Uh, the new blocks, uh, the blocks become more powerful. We have in the interactivity API, and we have the WordPress playground. So, uh, for the um, new, new blocks become more capable, I had a talk in the morning, uh, talking about block bindings. The idea is that um, you can bind the data to the blocks, and uh, you don't need to create blocks unless you have a very sp specific interactive thing that is uh, outside of the common. So if you, your blog just needs a specific set of dynamic data, WordPress allows to, to do that. And then we have the interactivity API. Um, there are cases, and we had talks in this WordCamp, where people want to provide a faster and almost like native experience, where you don't, it looks like a native app, everything reacts fast, it's, it is a single page. When you navigate, the interaction keeps going. Uh, WordPress will provide that by default. Uh, so yeah, let's see what, what how it will look. So we have the interactive API. There is a website done with it. When you navigate, it's immediate. Like uh, it, you, 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 you navigate between pages. There is no, like it, it's a single page. So there is like, uh, when you like, there is interactive widgets like you, you you click on a thing and it reacts on other parts of the pages. You know, you press in an item and you can like use a, for example, here we are going to play a video, uh, which is a trailer of the movie. When you go to other section and we will see it, the uh, interactive widget keeps playing like it does not reload. It looks like it is everything the same. If we are going to search, search is immediate while you are typing, you are seeing your results right away. And you can use full site editor to customize it. Like we are using editing the search template, adding a button that allows you to like a movie and it will like you use the same. I can align the button. I don't want it in, I want it in the center. Let's put it in the center. Let's save, let's reload. Let's like now the, our search allows to like a movie. 
let's press it and uh, like it, it, it just uh, work it. Um, this website is yeah. Oops, sorry. So I was uh, this demo that I saw it is a website which is wpmuos.dev. Uh, you can go on your phone and check this uh, the, uh, everything and navigate around and, and try what we just showed. It. There is the WordPress playground, which is like allows you to on your browser or on your phone or whatever device you have, you load the URL and it creates a WordPress instance that runs in the browser with using what technology called WebAssembly. The everything runs on your phone, let uh, on your on your phone on your computer or whatever device you are using. Let's see it. Like here, I I have I I just opened the website. I have a new brand new installation. I can try my themes. I can try plugins without breaking my real website. I have a like a a, a setup ready for me where I can try my themes, try to break things, experiment. Uh, like I can use these to have, for example, if I have a business that is a WordPress uh, plugin. Uh, company, I can allow you people to try immediate. Also, for development purpose, there are some advantages. This is uh, if you try use the WordPress playground, as everything is running on the memory of your device. There are no requests to a server. Everything is really fast. Like uh, you can try, uh, go to this website, and you will have um, a, new, a, a setup right away, like a WordPress that was created just for you. Also, you can download like this is temporary in memory, but you can download a file which is your WordPress installation, for example, to create a demo. You can export everything you did as a zip file and it, anyone can open their browser, uh, uh, import their zip file and we'll see exactly the same as you. It works everywhere. It's the same platform behind. There is no incompatibility issues. This thing is not going to work. Um, also, in the Interactivity API, there is this website. But right now on Gutenberg, if you install the Gutenberg plugin, you go to experiments and enable this Interactive API. And it, uh, like the core teams work right away, you will build this single page application. So people can use the playground and try it uh, uh, to see, like uh, create just a, a new site in the playground and you will enable the experiment and you can uh, take advantages of, of this. It's the, it's the end. Uh, thank you all for the for the attention. So now we'd like uh, for you to ask your questions. We wanted to say that if you feel shy about asking them in English, you can ask them in either Portuguese or uh, Spanish, probably a couple of other languages as well, and we can translate and take it from there. I need to stall one of your yes. microphones because okay. it's the only one. Oh. Sorry. Thank you for your presentation. Um, in WordPress Playground, is it possible to install premium plugins? Yeah, the the WordPress Playground um, isn't like you can import a zip if you have a, a premium plugin that you just bought and you want to try it in WordPress Playground, you can import a zip. Also, I did not show it. There are some parameters on the URL where you can specify it when you, for example, you want to create a demo in WordPress Playground for your plugin. You can put a specific string which is like a plugin something and it will automatically install your plugin. Um, on the Gutenberg repository, we also can, uh, uh, like you, we have a tool where you put the PR number um, uh, of the, the pull request on GitHub. And it creates an instance with that code change already applied. Um, it could, like, for example, imagine you you could integrate that playground with uh, GitHub for your own repository of a plugin, no matter if it is premium or it is free. Um, and you create a tool that allows people to, or developers to, like, in a code review instead of like checking out the code of that branch and do a thing, they can see in the browser right away the changes okay. without any oh. kind of effort. Oh, specific thing. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, more questions? You have the opportunity to ask questions to three core committers. So this is the moment for ask some uh, problematic questions for them. I don't know. <laughs> there? <laughs> just, just a hint. I don't know. Hi, thanks for all the information. Uh, this may be more of a WooCommerce thing, but 
Right now, I struggle a lot with maintaining a production and a staging site for an e-commerce store and pulling things down to do updates and then understanding what database tables are being interacted with on the live site. And is there anything in the future we could look forward to that maybe help us abstract out the uh, those tables a little bit more or something so we can manage a dev at our staging and production site? I mean, I don't think this is something we've talked about or that I've seen discussions of. I can imagine Playground to absorb some of these things by, make it, make, by making it easier to just um, replicate a setup that you have in something that's uh, ephemeral and on which you can test things. Yeah. It's also like on... Um on the phase three that we talked about, it's collaborative collaboration and flows. Um, and part of it, we want like to reduce the need for a staging site at all. Yeah. Um, where like the idea is that you will be able to like, um, like on Google Docs, you can like sh share, um, share share a stage of, of a document. We want to allow collaboration between multiple uh, multiple people on a website. And this um, the idea is that. You may like sh on your flow while you are developing. You may create like products that or pages, uh, posts that are not yet live, but you have a set of changes that you want to share with someone that wants to preview these changes. Um, so the the phase three will try to absorb these kind of things. It's not that is the fancy thing, which is people collaborating, like in a Google Docs experience experiment, where they are like in real time and you should you see the changes of each other. But that's just a very small part of it. Like the big, the big chunk is uh, the collabor. How can you collaborate on changes that may not just be the the content of of a post? It may be multiple, like menu changes. It may be style changes. It may be uh, be a whole set of things. And you want to to change that, uh, to share that specific change that your peers want to see. So you want to try things before really committing the things to your site. So if I mean. It, it will be a big effort, uh, like it was phase two to develop the full site editor. But if it is well done, uh, the need for staging sites will be almost absorbed. Hi, um, just a brief question. You showed the new admin interface, which really looks like, like current interfaces. Um, um, is there any, um, let's say, horizon on like the time when this is um, introduced to the community that uh, everybody can contribute with design and like other feedback that we just can all like collect uh, collectively like work on that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can, um, yeah, um, you can do that now. Um, if you haven't scanned the QR code, the, this will link to the presentation itself. And there's reference URLs at the end of all of the chapters that we showed. There's uh, basically there's an ongoing make core conversation about the admin redesign, not to mention the sub discussions in GitHub issues. Um, you can do that now and you should probably. Um, yeah. Er Meanwhile, uh, while I'll travel, uh, I'll ask a new one. Some of the features that you showed are already available in the Gutenberg plugin. Uh, do you know which of them will ship with 6.6? .6? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, for example, in the in the, uh, the playground is available and it's cheap, but it's not exactly a part of uh, of the the WordPress setup. Uh, the interactive API that we show, it, um, like the API itself, and to create to allow people to create interactive blogs, part of it is already cheap and it's available for developers to try. Not the experiment itself, where like a new site we make it interactive by default. That will not be part of six out six for sure. Um, uh, the part uh, the the part we show with about with content editing um, like where like show the lurking improve but it's uh, the content lurking is already available in, even in, in the the current release the one before uh, the improvements where we like showing the header and allowing the navigation there uh, we will try to make it for six .6, if not six .7. Um, 
but let's hope mm -hmm. let's let's see yeah. <laughs> let's see how, uh, um, uh, how things go. Um, same for the second time, yeah. Yeah. and hopefully it's a mod mod too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, the the grid is already, uh, there's some of it there. Uh, those features that we showed here hopefully will make it to 6.62. Also section styling, unless there's something like that's breaking and we need to pull it out. Uh, but if it's not 6.6, it's going to be 6.7 and same with zoom out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the overrides, so for the synced patterns, with the caveat that right now there's a very short list of block core block types that are enabled. You can override stuff in paragraphs, images, I think headings, and maybe something else. But yeah. I actually have two questions, if I may. Um, the first one is, as a front-end de uh, developer, we are always importing libraries to help us with the gridding system, right? So build grids in, in the front-end. Is the grid block going to contribute in any way for front-end developers to adopt that in custom blocks that we develop? So are, is there like a library of classes, CSS classes that we can reuse uh, to define those, uh, um, yeah, those grids and, and use on our custom uh, blocks? Uh, I mean, there are many approaches you, you can follow in a scenario like that. Um, there is the style, uh, uh, style variation, uh, the block styles you can register. So for example, if you use an external uh, grid library where, where you have a, a, a nomenclature on the classes, you can register several styles, for example, the, for, the clone, uh, for the columns block, which use this kind of, uh, of, um, of classes. So you register variations with the different types of grid that you allow by default. That's a, that's a valid approach there. Mm -hmm. um, it depends is, uh, on, on the scenario and, and the interaction with, uh, with the framework. For example, if you had an, a, an ADLS setup, uh, which w during the contributor day yesterday, we, sh we shake a, a complex scenario there. You can also like allow the people to edit the grid on the editor, which has like a grid editor build, and then dep you parse the attributes of the block and you render whatever you want, depending on the attributes of this block. Like if you have a really customized scenario there. So uh, it, it it really depends on on, on the specific case. Uh, but I think providing the grid editor in the backend, and then, then you, you will have many options to, to retrieve the values and uh, map to the classes you need. Right, right. The second question is related to the new admin. Uh, how extensible is it going to be? Is it going to be like a new set of APIs that we're going to need to learn to as a, as a custom plugin developer, for example, to add our tables in there? I'm thinking about the, the list, the listing table. I'm thinking about menus that we can create. Also, I saw a lot of panels coming left and right. Is this going to be available for us developers as well? Yeah. Um, in At different levels. So the data views as the UI component that you see, um, we are building that as something. We're dogfooding it as we're developing the, the different screens in the core so that we make sure that we have an, an API that works for the different kinds of views, whether it's a table, it's a list, it's a, maybe a Kanban, something. So that's one. Uh, but then at a, at a broader level, in a reimagined admin screen, um, then third parties should be able to easily register their own thing. We also, there's also obviously plans for a, a back compat plan where by default, the traditional uh, way of registering screens will just be uh, like maybe I framed into the whole thing, who knows, but um, but the idea is to start off with more restrictive semantic APIs, maybe based on fields and then screens and then collections of things that can be viewed and then maybe slowly ease off on the control so that if you really want something that is less declarative but has all the flexibility, then you could use that. Questions, one here and another there. Thanks. Thank you. This is a question about Playground. You mentioned it like being a replacement to staging, and I'm wondering if there are any plans to make um, MySQL access, like phpMyAdmin, connected to it, because if I install plugin and I can see how it works, I cannot see what it's doing in the database. Are there any plans to do that? Um, I mean, 
if you want. Okay, um, there are some approaches to see what what happens on the database level. Um, as I said, you can download the website as a zip file, and on that zip there is a database file. So it's an SQLite database behind the scenes, and you can open with any application. And there are many open source applications that allow you to explore the an SQLite database. Uh, so like what happened, like uh, what uh, the changes that happened on the SQLite database would be the same, the same changes that will happen on the real MySQL database if you were using MySQL behind the scenes. So that's a, a possible to, solution to explore. Like the, when you install a plugin, what changes did the plugin made to the database? It's a way like you can even download the zip file um, before installing the plugin and then the, the, um, install the plugin and then see the difference in the, the database with, with one of these external tools. Uh, maybe yeah, a playground in the future can try to integrate with plugins that allow to like explore the database that WordPress is using to provide the UI directly to do that. Uh, right now, it's as far as I know, it's not on the roadmap yet. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, these tools uh, can be third party tools can be used in a scenario where uh, the database exploration is the goal. Yeah. I, I would quickly add that if you don't know, the um, Playground works on a uh, one of the premises is that we've replaced the MySQL uh, layer with just the uh, SQLite from the, it's like the famous plugin that's out there. Uh, but obviously you have a very specific database setup where it really matters that the implementation is MySQL or Postgres. And having the playground with a different setup is a deal breaker, then that's not going to meet your needs. But I think, and knowing people like Adam who are working on playground, if you go to the repo and start even just proposing the idea of at some point offering a layer like a gateway for database where instead of SQLite, you can have the WebAssembly system talk to some database out there. Um, I think someone like Adam would, would be interested in, in exploring that. Maybe not now, but in a year or something. Okay, thanks. A very brief question with a very Brief answer. Yeah, hello. I'm asking about um, a media library. Library. Are we expecting something improved? Some improvements about that in the short or medium term? Yeah. Um, do you want to go? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, uh, as part of uh, the the screens that we show with the admin redesign. Um, and the component that uh, we had in a video where we have like a list of posts and you can show in a Kanban video, uh, the same component will be used for the media library to allow you to like, uh, to, like media is just another a different, uh, a media item is like a post, is like a page, is just a post type that uh, includes an image and has like metadata about the image, but for WordPress itself is a, is a post behind the scenes. Um, and there are plans to like create a revamp that meets the experience. So the, when you navigate in a post, you can, for, if you, for example, if you are seeing a list of posts and you in, in there's featured images and all the posts has featured image, you should be able to have the same view as you are at, or, uh, of on media items. Behind the scenes, they will use the same components. You may, like for example, an action that allows to select all the items, uh, multiple items and delete all of them, the same action should be able to apply in the media library. So the idea is to treat media like the other items uh, in this new system that is going to be built. And yeah, um, the plan is for the media library to be to be updated to use the, uh, the same UI components behind the scenes. Thanks, everyone. Miguel Fonseca, Jorge Costa, Maggie Cabrera.